Family. It is the place we all come from. The place we want to go. There's comfort in a mother's touch. A father's love sustains. Those first tentative steps of the young bring joy. With parent and child, sister and brother, we belong. Miracles happen here among family. But for every species, family means something different. Each animal has its own singular strategy. Some families are forever. An orca calf will never willingly part from its mother's side. Sea turtles never even meet their mothers. They face their first struggle to survive alone against staggering odds. An orangutan mother rarely encounters another adult except to mate. She's the ultimate single mom. Albatrosses mate for life. Should one die, it takes a bird years to recover and mate again. But a female bonobo chimp will mate with most of the males she comes across. It's her sons she's devoted to. She'll even fix them up with their mates when they come of age. Few parents are as generous as prairie dogs. They turn over their homes to their offspring when the pups come of age. While jackal parents often leave it to older siblings to care for the children. Meerkats use babysitters, strangers who earn their keep by tending to the young. But believe it or not, the most common family on Earth is no family at all. Once a year, Australia's Great Barrier Reef erupts. One coral polyp at a time. In a massive spectacle, the currents are showered with countless sperm and eggs. Coral offspring ride the tides of chance on their own. In nature, there's no single ideal family. And yet, all species share the same goal. To have children. To continue the line. To play their part in the incredible drama that is the family life of animals. the Okavango Delta in Southern Africa. It's a new day, full of promise. 60 baboons move as one, males guarding the perimeter, females and young in the center. Within their fold are subtle alliances, bonds forged by family. There are five subtroops in all, one for each dominant male and his harem of females. The troop's every fiber is tuned to raising the young. In that way, humans and animals have much in common. 
Mother and father both help, but they play different roles, each serving their own agenda. Females, the primary caregivers, have only a few offspring during their lives. Their maternal instincts are so strong that even from an early age, they practice mothering by babysitting. Males are determined to simply have as many children as they can, so they're less involved in rearing each. Instead, they offer protection. Today, they're on alert. In search of food, the troop is venturing out of its territory. A strange male sees them. And an opportunity. He wants to fight his way into the troop so he can lay claim to some of the females. And he won't stop there. The children are in danger as well. The outsider would kill them to replace them with his own. Unless he can be stopped. Outsider is repelled. The dominant male reasserts his place and his right to reproduce. That, after all, was what the battle was all about, the struggle to mate. Before there can be family, before the miracle of birth, the dramas of courtship must unfold. It is the first spark of life in all its spectacular variety. Yet even as the sexes unite, they celebrate their differences. From the start, males invest in quantity, females in quality. Eggs are larger and take more energy to produce, so they're fewer than sperm. Once the egg is fertilized, years of commitment may await the mother. To ensure the best offspring, she must choose her mate wisely. Males, in turn, must prove their Mr. Right. Standing vigil in Africa's Kalahari Desert is a springbok, a single eligible male springbok. For a year, he stubbornly defended a territory, risking his life to keep it. He's had good reason. In the midst of the harsh desert, the precious grasses in his territory are a lure for the opposite sex. Finally, his mating strategy is about to pay off. A herd of females is migrating in search of better grazing. They need to fatten up to prepare for the season when they'll bear young. The meal the buck offers comes with a courtship proposal. But having wooed his harem, he hasn't won them. With the females come bachelor males, who will try to challenge the territorial buck. It's a fast-track mating strategy that just might work.
The lone male has already paid his dues. Now he must defend his territorial rights. is not for show. Lives are lost with a sudden fury. Losers past gather at ringside, licking wounds from their bygone battles. Today, the challenger joins their ranks. As for the lone male, he's earned his prize. He is a prize as well. His victory, his vigor, testify to his good genetic makeup. Over generations, animals have evolved to become agents of reproduction. Their behavior even their bodies have been molded to ensure the continuation of the line. The act of mating hardly seems worth all the buck's troubles. But even such a fleeting chance to reproduce is a chance for immortality. Every species is testament to that. None more so than those of a feather. Female birds are generally more drab, since they can't afford to attract predators to their chicks. But males are courtship crazed. They strut their stuff. In the shadow of America's Grand Tetons, a competition is underway among creatures with a flair for drama. You'd think sage-grouse males needn't work so hard to attract attention. They already look outlandish enough. but they won't turn any heads if they're not stationed in just the right spot. What they're battling for is the best place to perform their mating display. As many as 60 converge on a courtship arena known as a lek. Those with seniority earn a spot at the center and they have little patience for youngsters who stray too close. Once they're center stage, the real show begins. Why, no one knows, but to sage-grouse hens, it's a crowd blazer. Still, no matter how dazzling a cock's display, if he's not in that winner's circle, the hens won't be swayed. One male wins that place. He alone may mate with three quarters of the females.
In the tropics of Central and South America, the mating dance is airborne. Tiny birds called mannequins also use common courtship arenas, or leks, to seek each other out. Their displays attract the eye. Mannequins make it look like they're flying backwards by abruptly turning just before landing. A pair of long-tailed mannequins contends for a female's attention. But these males aren't competitors. One is the adult owner of the display branch, the other his adolescent apprentice, learning the fine art of the dance. It takes both to pique the female's interest. By age two, male chicks are already practicing. But they may have to wait until they're eight to apprentice. Only then will they have their adult plumage. When their mentor dies, they inherit his display branch and his females as well. Birds, all in all, aren't ones to be shy. the crown prince of showmanship. The male peacock puts his courtship display on a billboard. His lure isn't lost on the female. The single scene, peacock style. The cock's tail may have 200 eye spots. The effect is eye catching. Females actually prefer the males with the greatest number of spots. But what real purpose could that tail serve? Perhaps the hens are mesmerized by the sight. Or it could have a more practical use. The bigger his tail, the more robust a cock's health. His display, then, may be more than show. It could be a sign of his good genetic heritage. The males don't rely on plumage alone to prove that. As at any lek, fights flare. Now that unwieldy tail only gets in the way. Living with such an elaborate showpiece isn't easy. 
If it's a calling card to females, it has the same effect on others. When it comes to eluding predators, it's hard to imagine a worse handicap. <laughs> Believe it or not, this too may be part of a mating strategy. To the female, the peacock who's saddled by a cumbersome tail and is savvy enough to avoid predators must really be a choice mate. No. Our genes are relentlessly creative. As they struggle to reproduce and endure, they gradually redefine life. Some species have been molded into strange extremes. Every December, the elephant seals converge on California's Año Nuevo Island, where they were born. The bulls are first to arrive. Only a few will succeed at what drew them, the chance to mate. The dominant males are called beach masters. The bulls battle for prominence and their mating rights. It's largely for this clash that they've evolved into such living oddities. They weigh upwards of three tons. Their chest plates are thick with blubber. Even their improbable noses are instruments of reproduction. They add volume to their vocal threats. Within days of the male's arrival come the females. They're greeted by an obstacle course of undeserving suitors, males who've lost and have no status. But the females have other plans. They're ready to give birth. Each year, a month after her pups are born, a cow has a short window to become pregnant again. She reserves herself for dominant males alone. Now the difference between the sexes is in stark relief. The males are three times the size of the cows. The sheer bulk that earned a bull his mating status now makes him a danger to his mate. His aggression takes its toll. Cows are often injured. Yet a suitor this big is one with superior genes. In fact, her bellows are a summons to any larger males in earshot. A beach master may impregnate over a hundred females in one season alone, but he'd better keep his guard up. In an isolated inlet, a bull stands sentry over his harem. His status is so assured he can enjoy a morning dip. Or so he thinks. A younger male seizes the opportunity. The 
the cow's cries are a siren to her mate of choice. A threat gesture from Water's Edge is warning enough this time. That's not always the case. Courtship has a brutal side, won and lost in the heat of battle. A male who's single-mindedly defending his territory risks death in more ways than one. In the mating game, the stakes are high. Getting the chance to reproduce may be more important to a male than life itself. Mud puddle frogs sound their mating call. The lower his croak, the bigger the singer, the better his prospects of attracting a mate. But his admirers are not the only ones listening. Fringe-lipped bats are just as attuned to the male's song and just as attracted. Mud puddle frogs fill the night with their overtures and their own death knells. Every species pays a price to reproduce. For some, the higher the price, the better their offspring's chances. It's not just the black widow male's genes that make him appealing. It's not his beauty or brute strength. It's the tasty meal he'll make for his mistress. He plucks her web, drawing her into a hypnotic trance so he can approach.
On the two orbs of his pedipalps, he bears sperm packets ripe for his rendezvous. Still, if his timing is off, he may lose more than a chance to mate. His is a fatal attraction. The female's abdomen is engorged with eggs. The transfer of sperm is consuming. But the truth is, the male is capable of replenishing his stock, proof he may actually survive to mate again. Each time, though, his vitality is tapped. One day, he'll become an easy catch for his hungry spouse. Today, this black widow escapes, but his gain is his offspring's loss. The meal he would have made for his mate would have helped provide for them. For a firefly male as well, romance has its risks. He may end his evening as a mate or a meal. There are over 2,000 species of fireflies. Each has its own distinct code, its luminescent signature to attract the opposite sex. There's little room for error. Some have a lifespan of just two days and can only spend half an hour seeking a mate. In all this haste, passion can turn predatory. The females of some firefly species mimic the mating signals of others. The male who flies to a false beacon is in for a surprise. His seductress gets a meal and possibly protection for her offspring to be. The male is laced with toxin, which she now absorbs, to guard her and perhaps her eggs from predators. The ultimate femme fatale may be the praying mantis. Her embrace is a death trap. This female wants to be wined and dined. But before her bow even has a chance to mate, she eats him, starting with his head. But the male's reproductive capacity only improves when he's decapitated. Suddenly, he has no nervous inhibitions, and his reflexes actually run rampant. Once his corpse is spent, the female savors the final course of her meal to the last morsel. A mother must provide for her offspring one way or another. Eating her mate is one option, but there are less grisly ways. 
like finding a male who'll pitch in. An osprey goes to great lengths to prove he can put food on the table. Long before the pair had chicks, he demonstrated he could provide with gifts of food. The best time for a prospective father to prove he can and will help is while he's doing his wooing. Male harrier hawks have a singular approach to courtship. They offer their gifts mid-flight The pair's aerobatics help forge them into a good team. The rigors of parenthood are sure to come easy to a duo who can pull off this stunt. As the male's prospects improve, he bolsters his credentials with contributions to the nest. For weaver birds, building a nest is a labor of love. The process begins with a simple half hitch and will take up to 11 hours to complete. The first knots are critical. An elaborate structure will hang on their threads. The male will be judged by his nest. It's one of the most important contributions he can make to raising his future family, and it will vouch for his level of commitment. Not every weaver's got the knack. Those that do are avian architects. They must master three different techniques. After knotting to start, the ring that will support his brood is built by twining. A classic weave will complete the palace. As it takes shape, its potential queens begin to take notice. To prove it's strong, the male performs a little demonstration. The female's inspection is exacting. If it passes muster, they'll tie the knot. With her consent, the male only now puts on the last meticulous touches. A nest has only one week to curry favor. If by then it's still overlooked, it's promptly dismantled, and its weary weaver must start all over again.
meeting, like any partnership, calls for negotiation. To ensure their offspring's success, both sexes give their all. Some devote their entire lives to each other. Every September, they come to the Pacific Island of Midway. Birds who've wandered thousands of miles across the open ocean. This could be the albatrosses' first time back after seven long years. Solid ground comes as quite a shock. They were all hatched here. Now they returned with one thing on their minds, finding a mate. An ungainly spectacle unfolds across the island in dance. Old flames are rekindled, new ones sparked. Partnerships are put to the test of measured steps. Season after season, a pair will return to pick up where they've left off. It may take four years of dancing before they'll finally commit. The reason they're so cautious is they'll stay together all their lives for perhaps the next 20 years. That's because it takes the efforts of both parents to raise a chick. A female lays an egg only once every year or so, but she can't incubate it alone. She and her mate share the responsibility. And once the chick is hatched, both take turns feeding it. Albatross parents are equal partners in their chick's destiny, even as they're committed to each other's. A lifetime is a long time. But strong is the marriage that gets off on the right foot with a dance.
In a prenuptial flurry, a Garibaldi fish clears a tiny corner of the reef. He's refurbishing a nest, one he inherited from a predecessor, one he uses every year. What drives him on is a quest to raise offspring he's assured are his own. Ultimately, that's what inspires animal fathers to play a role in rearing their young. For a month, he'll build his mat of red algae and banish unwanted intruders. An eligible female drops in to admire his spread. If there are eggs already there, the male's stock goes up, and she feels all the more encouraged to contribute. The male promptly whisks her away to prevent her from eating the eggs of her competition. He's then quick to scatter his newest arrivals with his sperm before any intruding males can beat him to the brood. By constantly patrolling his eggs from the moment they were laid, he offers them protection, secure in the knowledge that he's their father. The arowana fish of South America goes even farther to guard his offspring. The Amazon is rife with predators that might threaten his newborns. The solution? Safe haven on the go. Needless to say, father must forego eating while he's on watch. He's willing, for he has little doubt these are his young every last one of them. Perhaps no male goes to greater lengths to start a family than one that seems the stuff of pure fantasy. The last word in fatherhood may go to the seahorse. Incredible as it may sound, it's the male who becomes pregnant and gives birth. This is the one animal in all creation that struck this radical course. A mating pair will instantly flush with color when they rendezvous. They couple for life. The female deposits as many as 1,500 eggs in his brood pouch, and today drops but one.
He fertilizes, then incubates them. She'll visit him a few minutes each day for a fleeting pirouette amid the seagrass. After two to six weeks, the male seahorse gives birth. Labor is intense and can last up to two days. The babies are less than a half inch tall, the very picture of their parents and their gossamer hope. An animal is largely defined by how it engenders new life. That goes for steeds of water and land no less. For a zebra mare, the promise of courtship has been fulfilled. The grasses are in bloom, and so is she. She reclines, a sign the time to give birth has come. She and her offspring are now at their most vulnerable to the threat of predators. And yet, she's not alone. The father, her mate, is close at hand. He is her guardian, her midwife. He polices the periphery. At the sound of his warning bray, the mare is capable of postponing the birth for hours if need be to protect their baby. The newest member of the herd, just minutes old, now faces the challenge of its life. To nurse, it must imprint on its mother and memorize the exact pattern of stripes unique to her. Its life depends on it. Its mother jockeys for position to fill her newborn's vision and steer it clear of other mares. In the cryptic scrawl of her hide is written its one chance for life and its parents' chance to live on forever. No matter how many times it recurs, a new birth is still something miraculous. Each heralds the culmination of courtship and the birth of a new generation. And yet, life's trials have only just begun. The young were born of struggle. Now as they grow, they'll face struggles all their own until one day they'll pass the mantle on to their young. Our children are our ultimate acts of creation. The quest to endure through them is the driving mandate of all life. What a blessing, it so fulfills us as well.
outsider is repelled. The dominant male reasserts his place and his right to reproduce. That, after all, was what the battle was all about, the struggle to mate. Before there can be family, before the miracle of birth, the dramas of courtship must unfold. It is the first spark of life in all its spectacular variety. Yet even as the sexes unite, they celebrate their differences. From the start, males invest in quantity, females in quality. Eggs are larger and take more energy to produce, so they're fewer than sperm. Once the egg is fertilized, years of commitment may await the mother. To ensure the best offspring, family, it is the place we all come from the place we want to go. There's comfort in a mother's touch. A father's love sustains. Those first tentative steps of the young bring joy. With parent and child, sister and brother, we belong. Miracles happen here among family. But for every species, family means something different. Each animal has its own singular strategy. Some families are forever. An orca calf will never willingly part from its mother's side. Sea turtles never even meet their mothers. They face their first struggle to survive alone against staggering odds. An orangutan mother rarely encounters another adult except to mate. She's the ultimate single mom. Albatrosses mate for life, should one the incredible drama that is the family life of animals. the Okavango Delta in Southern Africa. It's a new day full of promise. 60 baboons move as one, males guarding the perimeter, females and young in the center. Within their fold are subtle alliances, bonds forged by family. There are five subtroops in all, one for each dominant male and his harem of females. The troops' every fiber is tuned to raising the young. In that way, humans and animals have much in common. and die, it takes a bird years to recover and mate again. 
but a female bonobo chimp will mate with most of the males she comes across. It's her sons she's devoted to. She'll even fix them up with their mates when they come of age. Few parents are as generous as prairie dogs. They turn over their homes to their offspring when the pups come of age. While jackal parents often leave it to older siblings to care for the children. Meerkats use babysitters, strangers who earn their keep by tending to the young. But believe it or not, the most common family on Earth is no family at all. Once a year, Australia's Great Barrier Reef erupts. One coral polyp at a time. In a massive spectacle, the currents are showered with countless sperm and eggs. Coral offspring ride the tides of chance on their own. In nature, there's no single ideal family. And yet, all species share the same goal. To have children. To continue the line. To play their part in... <laughs> Mother and father both help, but they play different roles, each serving their own agenda. Females, the primary caregivers, have only a few offspring during their lives. Their maternal instincts are so strong that even from an early age, they practice mothering by babysitting. Males are determined to simply have as many children as they can, so they're less involved in rearing each. Instead, they offer protection. Today, they're on alert. In search of food, the troop is venturing out of its territory. A strange male sees them. And an opportunity. He wants to fight his way into the troop so he can lay claim to some of the females. And he won't stop there. The children are in danger as well. The outsider would kill them to replace them with his own. Unless he can be stopped.